Hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to the endgame class. Uh, here, as promised, I have some fun endgame tactics for you guys to go over. Um, as I said in the previous lecture, the idea for tonight is going to be the idea of breaking through. Right? It looks like the opponent uh, in many of these puzzles has an impenetrable wall stopping your pawns from queening, but we're going to look at some common tactics that allow you to break through here. And if you guys do well, I have a couple examples from games of yours truly where uh, perhaps a little bit more practice in breaking through tactics would have been, uh, would have been helpful. But we'll, uh, we'll see if we, we get there in the end. Maybe you guys will just struggle so much with these tactics that uh, we will never have to get there at all. So this first position is actually from a game uh, between uh, Gaia Messi and Gleck, uh, which are names that I am vaguely familiar with, not super specifically familiar with their entire careers. But anyways, in this position, it was white to move and play. And here, of course, we have even material on the board. White has advanced a little bit on the queen side. Black has advanced in the center of the board. And it looks as though that black has uh, everything pretty, pretty much under control here. So what do you guys think? And go ahead and, and say some moves, but try and give me, a, give me the full line here. Try and give me the full line. So yeah, you guys are, are definitely on the right track. We didn't start off too difficult here. Didn't start off too difficult. So everybody wants to play bishop takes c6. And everybody is saying b takes c6, there is the move b6. But uh, you do have to uh, at least calculate what happens after the move bishop takes c6 as well, right? If bishop takes c6, our opponent is not forced to capture with the b pawn. b takes c6 is definitely a playable move. Or if bishop takes c6 is definitely a legal chess move. And so are you certain that you're winning that endgame as well? What happens there? What happens there? So yeah, of course, what happens there is we just take the bishop, black takes back, and the move d5 is actually going to be enough to win the game. So let's see it in action here. Of course, the first line to look at is bishop c6, b c6, and now b6. And as you guys were saying in the chat room after takes takes, this bishop unfortunately is blocked by its own pawn and cannot stop the pawn from queening. Um, if bishop takes c6, unfortunately this doesn't quite help black because after captures, captures of course is forced, and the move d5 is again breaking through the wall of the pawn on c6, and black is going to be unable to stop white from queening. Uh, after king f6, I think you can even just capture on c6, although maybe d6 is a bit simpler, where... Uh, a protected pass pawn is always going to be enough to win the game in this case. Uh, so that was an excellent start. Uh, none of you actually said sort of the uh, trick here, which is why not take on c6 with the pawn? Uh, of course, we don't do it because we want to play b6. But if you see this idea of d5, then maybe you would just assume takes, 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 and it's all the same, right? Uh, of course, in this case, though, it is not, because after b takes c6, black is able to sort of take back on d5 and have his bishop still around to uh, try and keep the game going for a bit. So you guys, we're off to a, a good start here. Of course, bishop takes c6 is the way to go uh, in this case. And I wanted to show you guys this position because it very much is just the introduction to the theme here. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of times in these end games, uh, they are won or lost, or sometimes these ideas are missed entirely because of these types of tactics, where one side is able to sacrifice their piece or sacrifice something just in order to open up the, 
the uh, sort of the pathway to queening for the pawns. Uh, let's take a look at another position now. We have this position here, and it is actually Black's uh, turn in this position. And I'll go ahead and flip the board for you guys, actually. Just so you guys know, this is a game between Peter Lecco with the white pieces and Sergei Karyakin with the black pieces. And I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think uh, the evaluation of this position is? What do you think the evaluation of this endgame is? And, you know, come up with a move or two. Come up with what you think Black's best move is and what some possible responses might be. Okay, everybody's trying to lose the game. Everybody saw the last puzzle and they're like, ah, oh, it's bishop c3. Bishop c3 loses a piece, my friends. Loses a piece. And white would win the game. Have to be careful here. Have to be careful. Don't try to approach these like they're just tactics puzzles. Uh, try and approach them like they are chess games where you have to find the best move. Bishop c3, of course, is worth calculating, but you can't start with the uh, the huge tactic finish every time. So what's the evaluation of the position? It's white, or sorry, it's black to move here. We're looking from black's perspective, and we're trying to figure out, number one, what the evaluation of the position is, and number two, what uh, is sort of the best line. I'm actually going to shrink that down slightly. So what do we got? What do we got? So don't just give me one move. Give me give me an example line. Of course, king f7 is very very natural for black, but you know, how might the play continue from there? What's black's drawing idea? How does black try to draw here? So yeah, you guys are are sort of still uh, trying to approach it with the perspective that uh, it's just like a tactics puzzle and black has some forced win here. But in fact, the objective evaluation of the position is going to be a draw. And if white plays well, it's definitely not, not black who's playing for a win. Uh, black only has two pawns left, and black should first and foremost be thinking, how can I stop this e-pawn from queening? So of course, king f7 is the best move. And then... For white, uh, the simple move is just going to be to play the move knight to g5 check, and then after something like king to f7, or sorry, king to e7, I think maybe simplest is the move knight to uh, f3. And after knight f3, of course, bishop c3 is still not working, because we can still get here in time, but what should black do after knight f3? Because black very much is in danger of losing this chess game. Uh, if black doesn't play well here, uh, the game is going to end with white winning the game. So you have to find something to do. So black to move here, black to move and try to draw. So a3, of course, is forcing the exchange of the pawns. Is that enough to draw? I actually, I very much doubt it. I very much doubt it's enough to draw. And so yeah, a couple people in the chat room, I am seeing now the correct suggestion. So this a pawn, well, it shouldn't be enough to win for black because the white knight is usually in time to stop this pawn, is a very valuable asset. And thanks to this asset, Black can, in fact, play the move g5 here, and this is the drawing idea. Black needs to play the move g5 to stop the white king from invading through the f4 square. And now, of course, thanks to this tactic, with the a pawn pushing, knight takes g5 would be a bit of a mistake, because bishop c3 is just going to win the game. We see b takes, a3, and now finally, the white knight is too far away 
to uh, to capture this pawn. So g5 is the fantastic idea to stop white from invading into the position and stop white from, you know, quite simply winning this chess game. Um, so kudos to you if you found it. Uh, now, while I was making fun of you guys for saying bishop c3, uh, unfortunately, Peter Lecko uh, was not quite um, on the ball in this case and instead played the move knight to f4. And now, of course, black to move and win. You guys all already know the idea. It's bishop c3. Uh, from f4, the knight is simply too far away to catch this pawn. If bc3, a3, and there's just no stopping the poor guy. There's no stopping the guy from becoming uh, a big queen. So, knight takes g5 is a draw? I don't think it is. Don't think it is. Is it a draw? It might be a draw, actually. I guess if you come back. I think white wins this more often than not, actually. I think white definitely wins this more often than not. Uh, I'm pretty sure this position is just winning. Um, for example, king f4, king e6, king here, takes. Yeah, this, this is going to be winning. Um, white can force the, the white knight off of b3. But I guess it's a bit more complicated than if white captured there. But black does in fact win in that position, I think. Anyways, none of that was played in the game. We saw knight f4 and bishop c3, and our tactic does work. So like I said, these breaking through tactics, very easy to miss, and very often the, decis the deciding factor in a lot of these uh, low material end games. Mm. Okay, Aryan says easy draw. I, I very much disagree there. Black is black is just winning, but we will move along to the next tactic here. Uh, so this one again is going to be black to move. And of course, in this position, it does seem as though black does have the upper hand here. The knight is attacked, and we have to find some plan of using these four pawns to break through against these three pawns. So See what you guys can come up here, can come up with here for uh, for black. More tactics, tactics, tactics. Guys, don't just say moves. Don't just say moves. Okay? Come up with a line. Come up with a line. And your line can't end with you being down a piece. Okay? Your line has to end with you queening. That's, that's the new rule. You guys can't just find clever ways to lose pieces. Okay? No clever ways to lose pieces. Just clever ways to queen your pawn. Okay, the, the object is not to get a passed pawn and be down a piece. The object is to get a queen. All right, let's not confuse the two here. Let's not confuse the two. Yeah, chess king, there's a problem with your line. I won't tell you what the problem is. I'll tell you that there's a problem. And yeah, uh, once again, someone in the chat room does does have it. Does have it. So yeah, uh, Muhammad is seemingly very much on the case today. So if d3, uh, I think the simple move, uh, c takes d3, might give black, you know, some chances here if after knight takes b3, but like knight c three knight a four like the game's definitely not over here right the game's definitely not over not only that i think that white actually has a much better move here in the move c4 and all of a sudden you have to be very very careful if you're playing with the black pieces here you have to be very very careful 
I think white is just simply winning this this d pawn now. Uh, yeah, I think white is simply just winning this this d pawn now. But the correct move, as some people in the chat did already see, is the move knight c3. And now we take advantage of the fact that white's knight is actually trapped. So knight c3 is coming with a very, very serious threat. And of course, uh, if white were to capture this knight, he's lost a crucial defender of the a3 square. And the move a4 is uh, going to win the game here. It's just going to win the game. No matter what white tries to do, he's never going to be in time to stop this a pawn. Uh, notably, though, if um, takes here, we should probably just play a2. And if takes here, uh, now I think a3 would lose the game to knight to c3. But thankfully, we do have the move c takes d. And we keep this knight boxed out just long enough to uh, go ahead and queen our pawn. So good job finding that one, guys. That one definitely uh, one of the harder ones here. Knight c3 attacking a trapped knight. Um, so let's keep at it. Let's keep keep on keeping on here. Uh, we have this one, which is uh, from a game between uh, Smyslov and Yastrobov. Yastrobov. And so this one, of course, is going to be white to move. And uh, yeah, we, we have another minor piece ending. Let's see if you guys can find the proper way to play this one out for a win for white. What do you guys think? See if you can find a way to play for a win. And then the harder question is, is that white playing for a win or is that white playing for a loss? Because it's not immediately clear. This is a free class. Hello, PKT. So everybody and their grandmother sees that the move B4 is the idea to break through. But the hard question with this puzzle is, is B4 actually worth it? Right? You're sacrificing a lot of material. A lot of material here. Does B4 actually win, or is that a losing attempt? Try and calculate every line here, you guys. You guys are a bit asleep at the wheel sometimes here. Losing, losing. Well, give me the losing line then, my goodness. Winning, win. It's tough, it's tough. So it might be tempting at first glance to uh, play the move a5 in this position. So that was the first thing that I was proud of you guys for not falling for. Uh, because after a5, I think white is uh, in pretty rough shape, right? You have to go king d3, you can take here, take here. And at this point in time, uh, I think that it's definitely black who is playing for the advantage and, and playing to win this game. Uh, white has to deal with these two passed pawns, and it's true that you broke through with your C pawn, but uh, white, I think, is is pretty close to lost here. Uh, potentially just strictly lost. Uh, but you guys did find the nice tactic bishop takes on C5, and in fact, this one is good enough to win in this line for white. Uh, if B takes C5, now simply A5, uh, B3, we do have to come back to stop this guy, and white is just in time to uh, to make a queen here. Uh, and I mean just in time. So if you didn't calculate all the way out to a8 equals queen, uh, then you, you could have got in, gotten into some pretty serious trouble there. Uh, but, of course, the move c takes b4 is potentially playable as well. So what's going on after c takes b4? 
uh, give me a, a pretty forcing line here because the moves are, are very, very forced. There's not a lot of uh, real variation for, for each side. And decide who you like better. Decide who you like better. So chess king says bishop takes b6, b3, king d3, bishop e1, is that what he's saying? c5, and we win. Interesting claim, interesting claim. Is there a better move than bishop e1? I'm not sure why bishop e1 was played. I'm not sure why bishop e1 was played. So bishop takes b6 followed by bishop d4 is also potentially interesting. Very potentially interesting there. So let's take a look. So bishop takes b6. I think everybody agrees black should be playing the move b3. And now the question is, do you respond to this move with king d3 or do you respond with bishop d4? And choose very, very wisely because one of these moves is advantage to black and one of these moves is advantage to white. Neither of these moves is plus a billion. Not yet. Not yet. So yeah, chess base India has an interesting question. If king d3, what if king f5 happens? What if king f5? And yeah, optic red panda does have a rather uh, interesting suggestion here. Bishop d4 is in fact going to be the move that grants black the advantage because the very killer bishop f2 is a tactic available to black. And... This puzzle very much is sort of the the uh, uh, poster puzzle for like you know a huge warning sign that doesn't make any sense. It's a poster that says, "Look out! Don't sacrifice all your pieces willy nilly. You have to calculate everything because if you're not careful, if you just say, "Yeah, I take the pawn. I go bishop d4. I'm defending everything. C5, c6, c7, c8. I win," then you could very easily run into these types of tactics where. By giving up material, your opponent also is getting a passed pawn. And these tactics are going to start to be available uh, for, for them as well. So, after bishop f2, I do think that black is simply better. Uh, white has to go something like bishop c1. And then from here, uh, I think really anything is playable, but maybe just bishop b6. And in the long run, uh, I guess I can even try and consider running this way, or actually pro probably just running up the board is, is going to be a bit simpler. Going to be a bit simpler. Running up the board, and white has some pretty serious issues in this position. Some pretty serious issues. So, king d3, now you have to figure out what happens after the move king f5. So, what's happening after king f5 here? Okay, so really quickly, what if bishop b2, chase the pawn with the king, uh, well, king f5, and if you start taking that guy, I start taking this guy, and going going with this as well, even. And losing a lot of pawns here as black, losing a lot of pawns as white, rather. So king d3, king f5. And yeah, you guys are on the right track. Now Now the move bishop d4 is going to be good enough because black no longer has this move bishop f2 because we can simply take it. Our king is in the square of the pawn and white is winning. Uh, what's the best try here for black? Well, uh, you can potentially play the move uh, b2 and allow white to take this pawn because you do get the king. Uh, a little bit closer to the action here. But of course, white is to be preferred in this endgame, and I think in the long run, uh, white should should end up winning. Although, I think you do have to actually go bishop bishop uh, c3 so that you can take this guy. And yeah, definitely not the easiest endgame of all time. In fact, is white even winning anymore? Am I doing something wrong here? Yeah, maybe we should just take this immediately. And uh, yeah. Definitely not the simplest endgame to win, but I think if you get to this point, you can sort of stop calculating and say, okay, this 
This is definitely a winning attempt and not a losing attempt. I have two passed pawns to my opponent's one, and I can start pushing them very, very freely. Um, so this one, a little bit more complicated than it first seems when you guys see this move b4. So let that be sort of a word of warning to you guys. Even in these tactics puzzles, it's very, very easy to, uh, to go wrong, to miss something, to say easy bishop d4, and allow your opponent this bishop f2 tactic to uh, suddenly get back into the game. Why don't you stay with the white king on e5 and just move bishop b2 to bishop c3? Well, okay, I mean, first of all, that's that's very much a drawing attempt, uh, repeating moves, but I think in the long run, with like the bishop here, white can just sort of uh, come up the board, right? Uh, I might be confusing whichever line you're talking about. Uh, let's move along to another position. Okay, this one's a bit on the easier side for you guys. This is from a game between Alexandra Kostinyuk and... One of the Polgar sisters, I didn't write down their first name. I think it was Susan, but it might have been Judith. You never know. And it might have been the third one. I don't remember her name. I feel so bad. I think it was either Susan or Judith, though. And yeah, uh, already we do see the answer in the chat room. Like I said, this one a bit on the easier side. Uh, the one to turn the game around in this case... Uh, even though white is completely down upon here, is the move g4. And of course, the thing to notice here is that your passed pawn is more powerful than black's in this case. Why is that? Well, because after h3, our knight can always come back to defend against this pawn queening. For example, h2, knight g3. And in the meantime, black is going to have a tough time stopping our pawn, right? But now the question is, you know, is white... Uh, is white actually winning here? <laughs> is white actually winning here? I feel like it's a valid question. Judith is the third one. She might be the youngest, but I, I feel like many people would disagree that she's the, you know, the quote-unquote third one. Let's go to the initial position again. Because I played all of that rather quickly. Played all of that rather quickly. So do you guys agree that my line was the best line? The other one, ah, of course, Sophia. I feel so bad. Apologies to Sophia Polgar. As if she'll ever see this. <laughs> Red Panda says it's not winning in the position I just showed. It's not winning the position in the position that I just showed. Does that mean that it's not winning here? Or does that mean that there's a better line? Black should have taken g4. I'll go through it one more time. Right? G4, g takes h4, g h5, h3, h6, h2, knight g3, knight d6 h7 knight f7 and I'll, I'll just tell you this position is drawn this position is drawn so can white do better <clears throat> ask me anything nexus no guarantees I'll answer, though. So yeah, of course, we should stop the age pawn with the king and keep the knight in our box here uh, with our knight. Keep the knight from uh, sort of moving. So g4 was, in fact, correct. gh4, gh5, h3. And now white to move and win. White to move and win. King f1 or king f3, says chess king. King f3, says everybody else. Be very, very careful, chat room. Be very, very careful. Did you calculate? 
Did you calculate? Did you guys calculate? I don't think you guys calculated. I don't think you guys calculated. Of course, the answer is to go king f1, as the chat room is catching on to now. King f3, uh, I don't know if white wins the long run or not, but in the short term, black can actually catch this pawn. Because you have stepped to the wrong square, my friends. You have stepped to the wrong square. So instead, you have to go king g3, uh, I think in this position, and take this guy. And yes, so I mean, like, white's to be preferred here because the black king is way over here. Is white winning in the long run? I, I honestly couldn't tell you. So king f1 is the important subtlety. And now black is helpless to stop the pawn from queening. And it is game over. So uh, I sort of preface this by saying this one was an easy one. The breakthrough, of course, was easy. But once again, the follow-up does turn out to be uh, rather subtle, right? Rather, rather subtle. You want to keep the knight here to keep the knight boxed, and then king f1 over king f3 is going to be a bit better. Uh, so yeah, Nexus, it's tough to say. Uh, I'm sure there's, there's some direct comparisons that you can draw, but uh, in general, uh, over the board chess and online chess does tend to be sort of radically different. So you, you could be much better than you would expect, or much worse than you would expect would expect it's it's tough to tell until you actually go out and uh and just play a tournament what if g4 h takes g4 so then unfortunately after h5 uh white still gets this past h pawn and black has all the same issues with being unable to catch it of course the king is too far away and the knight is still in the box uh, but now black just gets less counterplay because this pawn is never going to queen with the f pawn in the way Mm -mm. All right, let's move on to the next puzzle. Good work on that one, guys. But, you know, learn some caution, you guys. You guys be cautious. All right, I have a few more puzzles for you guys, and then we'll move on to a real game. Move on to a real game here. So once again, in this position, sorry, let me flip it, we have black to move. And this time, black is down a piece. Oh, no. Black is just down a full piece. So clearly he must be losing, right? Clearly he must be must be losing. It's winning for knight because for white because of the, because of the bad black knight. Um, yes, Peter, that that would be a fair way to phrase it. It's winning for white because none of the black pieces can catch the pawn. So it'd be equally fair to say it's winning for white because of the bad black king, or it's it's just winning for white because the the pawn can't be caught. So yeah, here you guys are on on the right track. It does turn out that both d3 and f3 do win the game. Uh, d3, of course, c takes d3, e takes d3, c6. You have to catch this pawn. Uh, and now, let's say white passes. You go d2. And as soon as the king steps to f3, or sorry, the king steps to e2 to stop the pawn, of course, f3 check is going to be the winning idea. And after g takes f, three pawns is too many for the white king and bishop to uh, to stop together. It's just too many pawns. h3, and the game's over. Uh, if you start with f3, then once again, I do think that uh, black is winning after g takes f. Of course, you have to move e3 check. And the same issues now arise for white with stopping either of these pawns. Uh, quick question for you guys. What's the evaluation of the position after e3? What's the evaluation of the position after e3? 
But yeah, you guys actually found both of those lines really, really quickly. D3, the immediate C6, it doesn't really change anything. Black would still play King D6. So yeah, of course, this one is just going to be a draw. White can shuffle between e2 and f3 or forever, or just shuffle with the bishop. So there you guys go. But what if, last question, h3. Now, of course, uh, I'm not actually going to force you guys to tell me. Black is actually losing. Can't give white that passed pawn. So good job on that one. Both f3 and d3 win. Let's move along. We have this position. This position is what we have between uh, Hualtuk and Capablanca. So we have another situation here where black does seem to be uh, definitely favored here, but what's the best way to actually win this chess game? And yeah, sorry, let me flip it one more time so you guys can see. It's black to move. I'm sorry. It's black to move. I am a failure. I'm a failure at introducing puzzles. I'm not sure if e5 first is quite right. It's not what was played in the game, at least. Where rook g4 was played? I don't think rook g4 was played here. Rook g4 loses a rook. Rooks are powerful. So yeah, you guys have the right idea. In some order, the move h4, g takes h4. If you go g4, and then takes, takes, takes. And all of white's pawns sort of die. So g takes h4 is necessary. Then, of course, the breakthrough e5 is the way, the way to go here. And after fe5, f4. And black is going to win the game with these two uh, connected passed pawns here. And this is how black can go ahead and break through. Does e5 fir first work just as well? Uh, probably. I think maybe it's a little bit less forcing because uh, if you do end up going for this line, uh, white for the moment still has this pawn and can maybe regroup a little bit. But I mean, it, it should still be winning. You can also play f4 here but you're leaving white with an extra pawn, sort of for no reason. So I think h4 first is a little bit more forcing, even though e5 might still win. And uh, and yeah, this is how Capablanca won the game, with the move h4, followed by the idea of h5. And yeah, this is just going to be devastating. The white rook can retreat, but after something like f3, for example, the king comes up, and connected pass pawns are going to be enough to win. All right, one more puzzle for you guys, and then I want to show you, for you guys, and then I want to show you uh, a position from a real life game. So, in this position, it is white to move, and I'm not going to tell you the evaluation. So, white to move, and you need to figure out if you're playing to win, if you're playing to draw. What's going on? Last puzzle. What if king f6 first? So, yeah. Uh, I am never going to be able to pronounce your name. I'm going to go with Smolinski, because I have a better chance of pronouncing your last name. Uh, 
that position was was good enough for black where you can play the move king f6 first it, it doesn't actually matter the idea of h4 and e5 isn't going anywhere so really like any move wins but the winning idea is h4 e5 draw would be easy says adi Ariane says e4, f4, knight e4. Ooh. Little Tayayu says pawn b2 to b3. Pawn b4 check. So I am curious why you guys think white is playing for the win. Why is white playing for the win? Everything is better for black in this position. I think you guys might be a little biased because I'm giving you the puzzle with white to move. Everything is better for black. Black's pawns are more advanced. Black's king is better than white's king. Black's knight is better than white's knight. The only thing white has going for him is that it's his turn. The only thing white has going for him is that it is his turn. What is the problem with knight e4? It hangs a knight. It hangs a knight, Manny. Your opponent could take it. Like, I don't understand. Like I told you guys a thousand times, you can't give me some clever way to hang a piece. You have to give me some clever way to queen a pawn if that's what you're trying to do. Okay, e4, uh, captures are not forced in chess. Black has more than one option here. Black has more than one option. Maybe more than one good option. Okay, Manny says knight e4, f takes e4, f4 exclamation point. Unfortunately for you, there are one, two, three, four squares remaining before you get to put a queen on the board. And unfortunately for you, your opponent has a knight. Unfortunately for you, tactically you immediately lose your pawn. So I don't think knight e4 is the way to go. I don't think it's the way to go. And as far as e4, maybe, maybe white is okay if black takes because you can uh, take back with check and go knight f6 and take this guy or something but maybe 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 unclear but black can go f4 and after f4 you're you're pretty busted pretty busted here fellas pretty busted so the correct move is actually going to be b4 check that's uh, optic red panda was bringing up in the chat this is the most forcing way to steer the game towards a draw. And that's exactly what white is trying to do here. White's not trying to win. Like I said, literally everything is better for black about this position. Everything is better for black about this position. All of his pawns are more advanced, his king's better, his pieces are better. So white is trying to draw. And b4 check is a great way to do that. If something like king to d5, then e4 check is good, I believe. Um... Yeah, e4 check. If king e6, we can take on g4. We can take on g4. And we are very much fighting for a draw in, in this case. Even here, the draw is not going to be easy, but we can get some counterplay against uh, the queen side pawns. And, you know, make a very legitimate effort at drawing the game. Make a very legitimate effort at drawing the game. Also available to white is a simple move like king d3, just trying to sort of maintain the position and keep black sort of at bay. With all that in mind, in the actual game this is taken from, between Borgo and Lodicescu, b3 was played. Okay, and how should black respond to b3? Why not taking the pawn? Excellent question. Uh, white would recapture with check, and go king b4. And it's not as if white is trying to win here, but uh, white is likely getting enough counterplay against the b5 pawn to draw. 
After something like knight c4, white probably isn't going to take this and give up his a-pawn, but he might start trying to reroute this knight, uh, for example. For example. And once again, it's, it's a tough position for white, because black is still uh, very much ahead, but white is getting at least uh, some counterplay here. So after b3, what should black do? What should black do? Remember, guys, that this is a tactics puzzle. Might have just not been a tactics puzzle for white. b4 check runs into a takes b4 check. Awkward. Awkward stuff. b4, a takes b4, king b5. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take the a4 pawn. The game still continues. So chess king brings up a really interesting point, which is this idea of b4 would be great if this wasn't check. This wasn't check, let's say just in a miracle world, our king were on c6, for example. And then we played b4, right? And a takes b4 happened, just let's say, instead of king takes, and a3. Then we would have this great little passed pawn, and we would have good chances to win this game, right? We can come and take this guy, and our passed pawn stays alive, our knight's coming into the position, and we might win. So how can we make it so this b4 idea works? Well, maybe we can play knight d5 check. And after knight d5 check, I know everybody was saying knight d5 check. Uh, the problem for white is that if he steps to the natural square of d3, now b4 is going to be a very, very strong move. A very, very strong move. Because after a takes b4, check. We have knight takes, counter check, and now a3. And we have officially broken through. And this is the great breakthrough tactic that uh, is going to help black win this game. Uh, if white steps back to b2, then of course the issue now is that we're not going to do this anymore, which would be a bit silly, but we are going to play king d4, and the white king has strayed a bit too far away. Same with king c2 here, just king d4. So king d3 is white's only real try, but then the great idea of b4 to end the game. Uh, so yeah, b4 is the breakthrough tactic that I'm, I'm ending on here as far as tactics go. And now I want to introduce you guys to a true tale of tragedy. This is taken from the immortal game, uh, Derek Clasby, everybody knows Derek Clasby, against Caleb Denby, who is of course a patser of some kind. And we don't care about this part of the game because it's an endgame class. Oh, look, Caleb's so smart, he trapped a rook in the middle of the board, and now white had to sacrifice a knight. And then we had an endgame. 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 And my question to you... Of course, black played like a moron here, and did not have to allow white to advance all of his pawns up the board. But my question to you is that... Should black play the simplifying move, knight f6? Should black play the simplifying move, knight f6? Trying to break through somehow. Or, after the trade, is white able to promote a pawn? Okay? That's my question to you guys. If it's playable, Black would love to simplify the position, get rid of the white knight, and then come back to stop the pawns comfortably. But after knight f6, knight takes f6, king takes f6, is white able to queen a pawn? And this is... Uh, all the previous examples were taken from games as well, but this one hits close to home, 
because maybe if I had looked at these tactics a little bit more thoroughly before this tournament game, uh, I might have made the right call here. Funny you ask, Peter Peterson. So some of the positions from today, uh, not all of them, but some of them were taking, taken from Mastering Endgame Strategy by Johan Helston, which uh, I have not personally read all the way through, but I know Jonathan Schrantz, famous on the YouTube channel, uh, highly recommends this series. And uh, if you want some more great instructional endgame content, uh, I would recommend that book, even though I haven't read it. I trust Jonathan on it. And it did have some nice tactics that I, I pulled for today. Well, you guys are, are talking in some some vagaries here. I'm just talking very vague. You're like, ah, you know, it's probably too far away to stop the pawn. But that's not what the class is about tonight. The class tonight is about tactics, and game tactics. So show me the win. Show me the win after knight f6, knight f6, king f6. How does white promote a pawn? Don't end your line until a pawn is a queen, okay? I'm sick of reading these lines where it's like, yeah, and then two more moves happen. It's like, okay, then your pawn is on b6. Pawn's not on b8 yet. Pawn's not on b8 yet. Yeah, everybody's ending the line after b6. I promise you guys, you don't get to queen until you get to the b8 square. Pawn b6 does not end the game. Just give me any line to completion. I'm not not too picky here, but you have to show me something here, guys. The line doesn't end with pawn to b6. Uh, chess king is up to the task. And yeah, Chess King didn't quite end his line with a queen, but he got close enough. So that's one of the key lines here, yeah. Knight f6, knight takes f6, king takes f6. Of course, the key move here is c6. That's what you should start with. It's the most forcing. Not saying it's the only move for white to try, but it is the most forcing. And if takes, then b6. We have to stop the pawn, so knight d8. And then after a5, king e6, a6. Oh, he stopped giving his line here, but a7, a8 is rather convincing. Tough to stop, right? Cannot be stopped. But b takes c6 is not quite forced. Of course, b6 is legal for black here. And what can white do after b6? Can white win after pawn to b6? Stop calculating after b6? Yeah, but knight d8 stops that pawn, right? Knight d8 stops the pawn. So yes, once again, a5 is the answer here. And now we are rather forced to capture. And there's no stopping the two connected pass pawns. There's just no stopping them. No stopping them at all. Well, I stopped them. But this move is, is a bit better, of course. And the line doesn't quite end here, because we have one little trick. But a queen is a queen. And I think we can even fall for the trick and still win the game, which is just a very cruel twist of fate, isn't it? Very, very cruel that this would still win the game. A4 check, just don't take. And then uh, 
the game ends. So, of course, uh, you know, Caleb Denby being not so good at chess at the time. I don't even know if he was a national master. Maybe he was. I can't remember. Uh, played knight f6, and I was like, yeah, c6, I'll take it. He'll take me back. I'll go knight c7. Uh, and life is, life is fine here. It's fine. Life is fine. I'll go here. It's fine. At least a draw. At least a draw. And then, of course, after c6 appeared on the board, I was like, oh, yeah, he can play b6, can't he? And uh, uh, the game ended in, in a terrible, terrible manner uh, after I was up a piece for the entire game. So it can happen to me too, guys. It can happen to me too. But that gives you some idea of how these can potentially show up in your own games. Of course, the, the tactics that I was showing earlier were all from games that were a bit uh, higher class than the one uh, that you're seeing in front of you right now. But it, it goes to show that even in games of, you know, at least my caliber, uh, these, tax, these tactics do definitely stand a fair shot at, at showing up in your games. And if I had calculated a bit better, was a bit more familiar with these tactics, I might have played a better move like knight 8 to g7 and had a small advantage because I am still making threats and black is not queening, or white is not queening by force. Uh, although likely the objective evaluation of this position is, is just a draw. Is just a draw. Mm -mm. All right, well, that is going to do it for um, the end game lecture here tonight. Uh, I know that this was a pretty wildly different format than what I normally do here. Of course, past couple lectures have been about corresponding squares, but I like sometimes presenting just uh, either studies or, or practical puzzles like this. So let me know what you guys thought about it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's a lot more, you know, stopping and starting, asking uh, the chat questions, interacting. But I have a good time doing lectures like this as well. Uh, that is going to do it for us here tonight on the YouTube channel. If you are watching live, be sure to head over to the Twitch channel for Analyze Your Games, the class where I analyze your games. Uh, if you're watching the video version or you've just had enough chess for tonight, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, my name is Caleb Denby, and I will see you next time.